Neil from Essex here. I made a critical error the other day. You know the importance of when a customer gets a new piece of equipment, of passing along the all-important dealer hat. And there's a gentleman that I've known for a number of years now, special guy that you might recognize too, who I just sold a new excavator to and forgot to send a hat along. So we had to drive up here to Mike Morgan's today in order to deliver the all-important Messick's hat to the man and his piece of equipment. I appreciate it, Neil. This was not on the truck the other day, you know, and I'm glad to see you make the trip and bring this up. Major oversight on my part. So we're going to take a little bit of time with Mike today and walk around his equipment yard and uh, learn a little bit about what he does and some of the machinery that he uses day to day. Messick's, a helping hand with your land. So the new piece here behind you, we just saw this dropped off the other day. Recently traded in the 57-4 on the Dash 5, bought it from Neil. And out of all the equipment we have here, the excavator gets the most hours on it. Yeah. When I initially bought an excavator, uh, there were always a lot of comments from people. They didn't really see the use for one in what I do. But the more that I used it, the more I think people understood how versatile these are. Yeah. It's interesting standing here, uh, you watch your log loads on the log loader and that kind of stuff. This is huge lumber. Yeah. And it, it, to me, makes a lot more sense on the size and scale of equipment that you run, seeing how large this stuff is. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, here we're in hardwood country. Uh, but, like, this machine, it's not going to pick up a complete white oak tree, but any 12-foot log that I have on the property, yeah. you know, if I have a big oak go down, this will handle it no problem at all. And generationally here so we went from a 57-4 to a 57-5 mm -hmm. to me sometimes i don't always get i look at this stuff all day long yeah it takes a lot to impress me uh, what did you see different here switching between generations of machines? the biggest change and i've only has have about three and a half hours on this so far uh but the cab is uh it's one of those things you didn't realize you needed until you got it yeah. it's it's a the visibility is fantastic super comfortable machine uh, the new screen is awesome and keeping up with the service records, all that stuff on the screen, it's real nice. Uh, it's just smooth. Kubota, their hydraulics are so smooth. Yeah. You know, they really are. Yeah. The machine feels similar. Oh yeah. It's cool that you see value in the screen because a lot of, that can be controversial sometimes. Some yeah. people like it, some people don't. Um, well, that tech's in there anyway. You may be, you might as well be able to see it see and it. utilize it. It's you true. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's no new computerization. It's just presented to you right. differently. Yeah. yeah. But it, so far, I, I love it. I do. Uh, primarily, I run the Workbrow rake on this mostly. Uh, the last machine, out of 500 hours on it, I probably had maybe 80 hours digging okay. trenches. You know what I mean? Everything else is mostly tree work and stumps and things like that. Yeah. This is easily the biggest firewood bucket I've ever seen. It's very handy. It holds... Uh, just rounds of firewood, you're probably close to a half a quart of wood that you can stack in here at a time. And where this comes in handy is one loading out of the firewood bin that I have. I call it the wood bunker. Yeah. Right into the dump trailer. But what also is nice with this is, like, I can go way out in the woods. We have a bunch of property here. Say you have a whole bunch of wood cut up. Instead of trying to bring long logs back here to the mm. yard for firewood, cut them up, throw them in this bucket, and bring them back to so the So I've often viewed this kind of bucket as, like... I'm moving dirt and I want the loose stuff to fall out the bottom, but you found a great use for it in firewood. Yes, and that way you lose a lot of the debris that you don't yeah. want in the finished product through the slot. I need to try that because one thing I've often struggled with in my own firewood stuff is I often try to grab it with my grapple. Yeah. And you you get one piece good and the rest wants to fall right. out. Yep. Yep. You know? Yeah. But the 97, uh, it's a beast of a machine. Uh, I did move a lot of dirt with this machine so far last year. Uh, I tell people, I run a tooth bucket. I wanted to ask you about that. I get comments from people, smooth versus yeah. tooth. I love a tooth bucket. In my opinion, tooth bucket rules, smooth bucket drools. That's, <laughs> that's the joke. As far as cutting and grading and yeah. things, I really like the tooth bucket. Uh, but this machine, you know, if you're not careful and you're stripping topsoil with this, it, it will roll right over the bucket into the cab of the machine. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing stopping this. It's, it's a beast. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times when we see people buying a machine like this, they're usually buying both, right? It, and normally what it is, it's a larger straight edge bucket and a smaller tooth bucket, and then they can be nested inside of each other on a trailer. Right. 
And oftentimes it's that straight edge bucket is wanted for like fine grading and that kind of stuff where you don't want the teeth yeah. impacting your smooth grade. But um, I like the teeth not only, also for fine grading where you're spreading yeah. top so you can rake the clumps and all that. You know what I mean? I just, yeah. I just always find a lot of utility out of it. Tooth bucket. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And then attachment wise for this. So you usually have your firewood bucket on here. I see grapples floating around. Do you yeah. have anything else for the machine? Uh, all I have for this is the firewood bucket, tooth bucket, the vernig grapple and pallet forks. You always been a steel guy? Yeah, I always have. I bought my first steel chainsaw. I was probably 20, 20 years old and I bought an old 036 Pro that I still have today yeah. and it still runs yeah. well. Yeah. So this is the solid choice right now? This is the go-to, the uh, 500i. Uh, it handles everything that I need. Uh, I run a 25-inch light bar on it. So I have pretty much enough bar to handle anything that I cut here. And it's just light, it's balanced well, and it has loads of power. Yeah. And it's not that big of a saw. Like even if you're just bucking up firewood, it's great for that. It's great for felling trees. Uh, you know, I'm not a tree guy per se. I'm a firewood guy and a sawmill guy. That's a whole different world. But for me, this saw does everything that that I need. They're, when they first came out, they're very desirable for a long time. Like you're starting to see some inventory of them now, yeah. but people were hunting all over the place for this saw when they first came right. out. Right. They're very hard to get. And you know, you always have people, oh, fuel injected shouldn't be in a chainsaw. And yeah. I start thinking back to some of the old trucks I had where you had a have like a combination to get it started, you know what I mean, with the carburetor. <laughs> Fuel injection is pretty nice, whether it be in a vehicle or a chainsaw. Are, are you mechanically savvy enough to be like tinkering with a carb and that kind of stuff? Yeah, carbs, level? yeah, stuff like that yeah. I can do. Yeah, but they're quirky, you yeah. know what I mean? They are. And you just don't worry about it anymore with no. this? No, yeah. no, this thing is a, it's a beast. I love that saw. Cool. This is outside my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how the... Uh... So this is a Woodmiser LT50 sawmill. Yeah. I started off with a Woodmiser LX150, and it was a manual machine. Okay. This is fully hydraulic, so this will load the logs on it. It will turn the logs for you. It has a board return on it. Uh, this is a real production machine. Like okay. For myself, really to run this right, you'd need probably two other people with you just to offload lumber and Could, keep moving. Because you're working that quickly. It, it, it saws really fast. It's got a 35 or 38 horsepower Yanmar diesel on it. Uh, really nice sawmill. The LX150 I bought as kind of an experiment just to see if I really enjoyed it and it's something that I wanted to pursue. And uh, so that was the plan all along. If I liked it, I was gonna upgrade to a fully hydraulic mill and uh, that's what I did. So the normal process for you is use the excavator to basically pick the lumber, or pick the logs, yeah. carry it over here and set it on? Yeah, I use the excavator mostly or the skid loader with forks okay. uh, or even a tractor, but the excavator mostly. I can just kind of gingerly set logs in here and and uh not have to like roll them on yeah right yeah yeah cool what's the so if you're running one of these what are the the gotchas like what what makes the machine easy or hard to run so this one you, you run everything from this end right here my old mill you walked along beside it okay uh but turning the logs these things are heavy you know what i mean and having the log turner is the huge advantage on these i'll okay. show you that here in a little bit but it you can flip the logs, you can level the logs out, and before, that was a lot of handwork where you'd strap it to a machine, lift it up a little bit, have to crib it some to get the logs the way you want it yeah. and things. This just does everything. Super cool, like, purpose-built equipment, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, when you get a company that really understands what the yeah, operator is doing. They've been around just, forever, and this is yeah. their world, you know? So this one's a little exciting to me. I bet. <laughs> Tell me a little about the log splitter. So this is the Wolf Ridge Pro 28C, and uh, this has split a lot of wood. And comes from Wolf Ridge Manufacturing. Uh, Chris and I are the owner of that company. We've known each other probably five years now. They built a quality product out there in Wisconsin. Uh, fast log splitter. I mean, yeah. it, it makes some wood in a hurry. So we are, I think we can say now, a dealer for this company now, which is pretty that's, exciting that's to us. That's great news, that is. Uh, yeah, and, and partly, honestly, you've had a little bit of influence in that my brother bought one of these based upon your videos. Oh, really? Um, and really kind of introduced us to the company, so it's kind of an interesting story. What do you, the auto cycle valve, so yeah, I got so a question in that. All that does is uh, the auto cycle, so you can push both of these forward, 
and it will do an auto return. Okay. Okay. And it, it will cycle. So in other words, you can go like this, it'll go all the way out, and it'll return yeah. on its own. Does that freak you out from the safety side at all? Uh, no, or but you... it, it doesn't me, but it would be something that I, for a new operator, yeah. you know, you just have to know to keep your hands away from I've split it. a lot of wood with my kids and that kind of stuff. And, yeah, right. Um, and you don't of, have to run it that way. You yeah. can run it with just this. Okay. Out and back. So not using both of them together then just gives you a regular manual yeah. function. And, and the when thing you want about auto, use the other handle. These type of, like it's a professional, you know, commercial right. unit. Uh, this is a 28 ton log splitter is, is what it's rated yeah. at. Compare that to a 35 ton at a big box store. I don't know how they do the calculations. I have no idea. There's no, you know what I mean? No comparison. This, no comparison at all. None. Yeah. yeah. Uh, standing beside it, I mean, its scale is always hard to gauge when you're watching videos. This is a larger machine yeah. than what you might guess. But you know what? It's balanced well. Now, on this stone in here, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's balanced very well. That tongue will extend out, and you can pick this up and roll it around. It probably weighs... 1,500 pounds, yeah. but you can roll it around no problem at all. And I, one thing I noticed too I thought was cool is that the tongue can go on both sides. Right. Yep. Um, my brother uses his, he pulls it around with his RTV and then tries to pitch the wood through the splitter across the ramp and then straight into his tailgate. Right, um, yep. Because he could kind of pull it around from whatever side he wants. Yeah, but great machines and just a great company. And uh, we have it paired up with a 32 foot conveyor here. Uh, a lot of people will buy the splitter first and then they quick re quickly realize how much wood it is producing, and that's where the conveyor comes in. Have you ever stacked that firewood pile up to the conveyor? Yeah, it'll run over the sides before it gets really? that high. Yeah, that's yeah, high. <laughs> yeah. How do you sell that much firewood? Oh, we sell out every year. It's just, you're doing it so many years. Okay. Uh, People just start coming yeah, to Yeah, and then they tell a friend, and, and you just have to sell. You can actually make money selling firewood. You just have to sell a good product. If you tell them it's dry, it has to be dry, and you deliver it when you're gonna say you're okay. gonna do it. It's not that hard, you yeah. know what I mean? That's all you have to do. But I've been selling wood for years, uh, probably 25 years, and honestly, it started off, it paid for a lot of Christmases and things okay. when we first, you know, we were broke when we started out. And firewood was kind of my, uh, like, Christmas money. And yeah. Helped to pay the bills. And I just always had an attraction to it. And I loved saws and, and wood chips flying. And uh, <laughs> it, it's just, a, it gives you a sense of accomplishment, at least for me it does, where you can just take a dead fallen tree in the woods yeah. and turn it into a marketable product yeah. on your own. There's it's a just, sense of, It's just a, yes, gives you a cool feeling. I'm totally with you. When I was uh, 14, 15, 16 years old, we used to do what we called the firewood farm. I had yeah. little flyers I stuck in everybody's mailbox at church. Yeah. And uh, 70, 50 to seventy-five dollars a cord split, cut, and delivered. Yeah. Which is you know twenty-five years ago oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I spent a lot of time as a kid. That's how we kind of made money on the side for our spending money. Right. And so yeah, this I'm right at home on that kind of. It's thing. not for everyone, but some guys they're just. It just I just enjoy it. It's yeah. Just, it's satisfying work. It is. Yeah. And like our building up there, that's a big building, knowing I'm heating that whole building with my own labor. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just makes yeah. you feel good. Yeah. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy. You know? <laughs> so what do you use the RTV for? Uh, the RTV we use for everything. Uh, we have a big property here, and just running out to the woods, down in my son's house, down over the hill, down to my mom's place. It's kind of my support vehicle for down here at the sawmill yeah. and the log splitter. Run down here with my fuel, my chainsaws, and it's just a great way to get around the property. Yeah. So all this stuff is connected enough that you can just zip back and forth. Yeah. So we have uh, we have about 50 acres here. Melissa and I do, and then uh, my mother lives off the next road over. She's got about 50 down okay. there. So there's 100 acres here, and we probably have three or four miles of trails oh, at, awesome. at least throughout the woods here, and uh, that's what we use these for. So the speed that you get from this is desirable over like a more work-oriented one? Uh, for right. around here, it's plenty fast for yeah. around here. You know what I mean? Like our trails, there's lots of sharp turns and steep hills and, and things. It's yeah. not like we're out in the middle of the desert where you can just, yeah. you know, really crank it out. But around here, this is a good fit for us. So we were talking just coming in here. So you have a 2023 headed out. This is a 2024 that just showed up. Yes. Differences between those? The difference... The main difference that I can see in this, uh, the old one, it wasn't 
It wasn't horrible, but you would get a little bit of a surge when you stepped on the accelerator yeah. pedal. That has gone away in this machine. Yeah. I don't know what they did, but it's different. The, I used to have one too, okay. and I spray my backyard with it. Yeah. And having to try to drive it at six and seven miles an hour, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, yeah. right, it wants to go. <laughs> yeah, it wants to go. And yeah, that was a challenge. So I agree. I've noticed too that these aren't as herky jerky as what the. What's the top speed on this? Like 45? 40, 45. Yeah. I've, yeah. I don't think I've ever even come close to that around yeah, here. They're quick. There's nowhere around here I could go that fast, yeah. really. A Rex 600. These are made in Australia, okay? Now, Australia has very hard wood, uh, like very hard. Like yeah. we talk about our hardwoods. They have very dense, heavy wood. But I found something out. The max opening on this is about, I don't think it's up all the way right now. Yeah, it is. It's 18 inches. Okay. So some people here in the States, you have firewood longer than 18 inches. Uh, over there, all their firewood's 12 inches long. I don't- 12 inches long? 12 inches long. Okay. Well, metric, whatever that yeah, works yeah, yeah. out to be, but yeah. And, uh, but this is an incredible machine. The advantage to this is, you know, like we have that firewood bucket. Yeah. You're out in the woods, get a load of logs, a load of rounds, dump them right in. And it's great for a one man operation that wants to produce a lot of firewood. A lot of firewood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll crank yeah. it up. I mean, you made you made work of a round like this. Yeah, in white oak. No time at all. I can do a cord, a full cord myself in probably 20, 25 minutes. Wow. You know, you know. It's awesome. It's got the conveyor. It's a simple machine, uh, but they got it figured out over there. Uh, the conveyor is hooks to a winch. For transport, that conveyor kind of folds in half and it stands up. Okay. Uh, but you just level it with the jacks. It's got a Yanmar diesel on it. Have you ever seen a hitch like this, Neil? Uh, it's it's got to be a European thing I or have. something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely not something you see around here. Is it mechanical or how is it? Yeah, so it works. I, this may be if it had brakes. I don't know what that is. But this is actually pretty slick. See how that works? Yeah, spring-loaded and then it'll pop down. Yeah, we'd have some big tractor hitches a little like that. But this is weird. Yeah, that, is that possibly for a brake cable if this had the, the uh, road? There you go. You know, right. I don't know. Yeah. And a sweet looking fuel tank on it too. <laughs> it's not for drinking. Not for drinking. <laughs> don't drink diesel fuel. The back side of this, that's where the, that's where the real action is. See the multiple wedges on the oh, back? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so when you go through and you put a flap through the back side of it, it just cleans. Yeah. You, you don't have to try to pull it back. Right. Yeah, you don't pull it back. You just always keep pushing it forward. Did you see, does uh, Wolfridge do that on the vertical one? Uh, not on, no. Okay. No, there's this more like that split split force one right there, just for sizing firewood. Yeah. Uh, when I first did a video on this, I had a lot of questions because it's something new. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and people have never seen one here in the States like this. Uh, but people are saying you should have wedges on the other side. You don't want that because... Right you want to keep moving everything forward and you don't want to have to bring the wood back to you. You just shove it forward a little bit, split it, shove it forward, split it. So an LX40, these are still hard to come by. Are they? You are a lucky soul. Very n nice tractor. I was just telling, uh, like I was telling you when you came, when it's all said and done, this is what I will have, the okay. 4020. Uh, you know, we have a partnership with Kubota just on the tractors in the sidekick. These are actually on loan. I had the previous model, the LX, uh, what was it, the 30, 3310. 3310, good tractor. But this, I didn't know the transmission made as much noise in the 3310 until I got this. That went away. A little wider front end on it, much more stable. It's crazy how just a couple inches yes. makes so much difference, yeah. you know? But, and <clears throat> loads of horsepower in this tractor this size you know if i run a five foot rotary cutter with this and i've got some hills that you'd never consider going sideways on but i'll go uh -huh. up and down and there's no lacking horsepower in this i mean it's it's really nice i like this size tractor so you're one of the few people at this point that had could have gone from a 3310 to a 4020 i would like to also because yeah. <laughs> i have a 3310 and how dramatic of a difference is it it's big, and uh, plus it's set up with a three-speed hydrostat transmission. You know what I mean? Because a lot of tractors these size, you'll see a two-speed hydrostat in yeah. them, 
and, and you have a true low range in this, a very formidable mid range, you know what I mean, that I can do loader work and all that, and then high range if you're just getting from point A to point B. But that's a lot of horsepower yeah. in something this size. Yeah, you know, it it's a much more capable tractor than people would guess. Oh yeah. A have you found a reason? You don't have much PTO stuff to use like the 540E or any of that kind uh, of thing. I have a tiller. I'll be doing a big food plot out there this spring, probably okay. an acre and a half. I'll be using that tiller on this tractor. And it's a six footer and I know it's gonna handle it no problem at all. Yeah, 40 horse hole. Yeah. yeah. Another thing I'll say about this, the loader control in this compares to a piece of construction equipment, in my opinion, meaning it just has that feel to it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's got a very smooth loader operation. I pride myself on how I spread stone. You know what I mean? Yeah. This, this is a nice, nice touch. I try to talk about that a lot because that, that's one real differentiating factor between equipment yeah. is the feel of the hydraulics. And that yeah. is such a hard thing to convey right. to somebody that doesn't have that experience. Yeah, yeah, it's huge on this. Uh, it just, it just, it's a firm, I don't even know how to describe it, like you said, it just feels right. It, it feels, <coughs> the sweet spots feel huge, Yeah. right? Like it just, it's not hard to find that magic place where right. it's doing what your brain is trying to convey. Mm -hmm. um, and for whatever reason, Kubota does a great job of making that easy. Yeah, they do. Yep. But no, this is a, this was some changes on this were huge in this from the old LX to these ones, from yeah. the 10 series to the 20. Pretty, you know, pretty much from a distance, they look the same, but there's some big differences yeah. here. Yeah, it's rare that a tractor gets the mechanical overhaul to the degree that this did. Yeah. yeah. When you see a whole new rear end and that kind of thing. Right. But yeah, I'm with you on that one inch too. I tell people, we get stability complaints from mm -hmm. the other ones because you have all the weight of the cab up high and stuff. Yeah. And the wheel spacers are an inch and three eighths. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I feel like, put the dumb wheel spacers on because yeah. that inch and three eighths makes more difference I than know. you can ever imagine. It's crazy. Yeah. So that's all the power units, right? right. So we've got a handful of attachments too. Yes. This is the Vernig uh, V60. I bought this from you, Neil. Yes. And it's a wonderful. <laughs> you remember I asked you, I said, I'm looking for, it's a big machine, the 97. I need a big, big grapple, heavy duty grapple because it would be very easy to twist up something. Yeah that uh, wasn't built like this. But the V60, I use this thing, uh, root knot stumps. I carried, you can carry brush piles with this as big as that woodshed. Yeah. I'm not exaggerating, <laughs> you know what I mean? And just pick the whole thing up, move it to your fire or whatever you're doing with it. Great yeah. for land clearing. I don't use this much for like moving logs around. It's a little overkill almost on that machine. When I had the excavator, mm -hmm. I can be a little bit more precise <laughs> with where I'm putting it. Uh, but for ripping and tearing and moving brush piles and stumps, yeah, this is a great it, grapple. It, it checks a lot of those, you know, you can buy a lot of grapples, right? Yeah. So many companies that weld these things anymore. Um, but I like when you look at this stuff and you find like replaceable teeth and things like stops. Yep, you know. positive stops. It's, I really like this grapple. You, because uh, remember I asked you, I said, I want a good grapple because <laughs> I, like yeah. I said, that's, what's the 97 weigh? 12,000 12, 12, pounds? 12,000 pounds. Yeah. You can bend some stuff up with that very grapple easily. if you don't have yeah. a good grapple. Yeah. And then this splitter looks like a lot of fun. Do you use this much? Oh yeah. It's the Split Fire 4209. Now this goes on the excavator and it splits both ways, okay? So if you have big rounds, I use this for big stuff just to kind of downsize it. Uh, the real big stuff is a lot of work, but you get a lot of wood out of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll, I'll have a bunch of rounds laying on the ground, have this on the excavator, and you're just sitting there in a heated cab, you know what I mean? And what I like to do is pinch them, take them to my pile, split them, yeah. and grab another one, and don't split it all the way through until you do that. And I, I don't make a finished product with this, but you just downsize them. You know, I'm getting older, Neil. You know, I don't like lifting that Nobody big. does. You can run these you can get a different setup and Wolf Ridge makes one as well. You can mm -hmm. run on a, on a, uh, a skid loader. They work great. My personal preference is on the excavator just because you're not tearing everything up around you. Yeah. And it's not the end of the world. Or if you had a, a smooth parking lot that you're working out of, but a skid loader with one of these, you're constantly turning and you're just making a mess yeah. where the excavator, you can just kind of. Yeah. Getting the alignment right. Yeah. Would be a. And that lot, way you're not getting dirt and stuff all over your firewood. Yeah. Cool piece, definitely a little different. Yep. So I'm always hearing more interest in buckets like this. Yeah, this is a 48 inch 
tilt bucket from Workbrow. Uh, fantastic. I've only used it a few times so far. Uh, my sister's driveway was one place that I used it. It's probably a quarter mile long. Ditches always need cleaned out. Hillside on the upper side, a lot of clay. You get that pumping, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can clean out a ditch with this thing. You can shape the ground with it. And what's nice, you use the offset boom on the 57. You're not down in the ditch, you're parallel to the ditch. And I can not only clean the bank, clean the ditch, pull the driveway off, and it's just- All from sitting in the seat. Really nice, uh, really nice bucket. Yeah, it changes the way that you can use your excavator. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, by having that extra function. So for the excavator, I've got this, an 18 inch bucket, a 30 inch bucket, the log splitter, I think that's it. But that little rake is on there and more the than anything else. And the rake that I use all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, on a side note, the 57, if anybody asks you, handles a 30-inch bucket, no problem at all. Yeah. Digging shale and stuff. At first, I was thinking 24, but, you know, moving bulk dirt, that nah, handles a 30, no problem at all. Yeah. The paint's not even off of this one, Mike. No. I don't, <laughs> with having a skid loader, I don't use this much, but I do use this grapple on the LX. Uh, uh, a little bit around here and then when we go to West Virginia, that's a nice tractor to yeah. haul down there to clean up. But uh, yeah, I use that grapple for that. Works great. When uh, when would you choose the tractor and the grapple over the skid steer? I mean, trucking aside, right? Trucking aside, uh, just size and material and, and how, uh, you know, how much you have to do, yeah. you, you know? Do you feel like there are jobs that you could do with the bigger machine that you couldn't with the smaller one or just taking smaller bites? Uh, it's nice. I can pick up. So trees that are not real desirable as far as for lumber or firewood, maybe rotted, gnarly stuff or real small stuff. I can knock them down with the excavator, the whole tree. Yeah. And then I can pile 20 of those up and pick them up with a skid loader. You know, the entire thing in one shot. Yeah, huge productivity difference. Yeah. But where this shines, if you got a tree down in your yard, you don't want to take that skid loader in your yard. You know what I mean? Yeah. You would use the tractor. Yeah. It's amazing anymore, 25, 30% of the tractors that we're selling are going with grapples. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's become real popular. This is another piece I don't see every day. Yeah, this is a log right log arch. Uh, log right's been making these for a long time, but this gives you the ability with like the sidekick, for example, mm -hmm. even a four wheeler, to move, you know, 1,500, 2,000 pound log out of the woods back to the yard, you know, and you basically just back over top of it. And this one is actually light enough. You can grab it right here if you've got to set it over top. It's heavy, but yeah. you, you can do it if you need to move it around. Just choke the log, crank it up. It'll rest up underneath there and uh, it'll kind of dangle, but I've, I've brought a lot of logs out of the woods yeah. just with the sidekick with this. The thing I think is cool is it keeps it out of the dirt. Too. Keeps it out of the dirt. See, most of our trails are eight feet wide. Okay. Now I like to grapple things out of the woods or, or use this. Uh, I don't like skidding them. All it does is tear up your trails and you get yeah. dirt and mud all over your logs, which shortens the life of your saw blades, whether it's a chainsaw chain or the blades on the mill. So it's nice to keep them out of the ground and out of the mud. And, uh, but you know, something like this in a four wheeler, you can move big things with mm -hmm. this, you know what I mean? Without a huge expense. Uh, so if yeah. someone is just starting off with a small sawmill, this would be a pretty nice little, nice little addition. Yeah. Without having to get into big equipment. It's a box blade and a land plane. Yes. That's always, uh, always the debate. Which one do you go for? <laughs> uh, new stuff. And moving dirt, box blade, refreshing driveways and grading them up land plane. Yeah. That, that's what I, I do. Land plane, I didn't even have one of those till a couple years ago, but for fixing up driveways, like my mother's and my sister's driveway, it's long and oh, it's just enjoyable. You put that land plane yes. on there and it just- It's so easy to use. Makes you look like a professional. Yes. You know what I mean? It really does. Yeah. It's, uh, not a steep learning curve on them at all either, you know, right. and they just do a nice job. Uh, box blade will carry more material with you. So these are nice if you're putting in a new driveway, you can carry more stone with you as you're spreading it out and things like that and moving dirt, of course. Uh, but so everybody always asks, I say, you know, refreshing old driveways, you want the land plane, building new stuff, moving dirt, box blade. That's yeah. my opinion. I always look at these and say, for either one of them, they're not expensive implements. Right. And so somebody should have one, even just use its ballast on the back of your tractor yep. when you need it. Um, I was over at my neighbor's the other day. He's got a 
3800 yeah and like he's got a box plate on the back with a piece of angle iron or a big i beam chain to it just for ballast yeah you know what I mean? yep. appreciate you taking the time today i appreciate you coming out neil thanks for I showing did. me the uh the yard yeah it was nice of you to make the trip the toy yard <laughs> <laughs> If you're not used to watching Mike, his channel's Outdoors with the Morgans. There's, how long have you been doing this for? About six and a half years. Six and a half years of videos to go back and watch if you like, and you can see all this stuff in action. So if you're shopping for a piece of equipment and we can help with most, 90% of what you have here. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I sell in some fashion. We're glad to help or if any parts of service needs that you got, give us a call. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com.